Hey, uh, welcome to just my opinion. Uh, this is a opinion uh, portion of I, IGPS, basically where I do before the shows later on in the same day. Uh, my opinions on new stories of the day, and I don't say anything with regards to uh, Green Party or otherwise. Um, I was watching a little bit before I got on last night to do the I, IGPS. Uh, I was watching the uh, the Senate hearing, uh, trying to uh, pass the uh, the 1.9 billion uh, trillion dollar uh, COVID-19 um, bill that Biden has proposed, and uh, and uh, Barry Sanders has you know piled, piled on a lot of stuff, the good stuff that the general public as a whole need. Uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up because this kind of this kind of made me think. A little bit. Uh, Joni Ernst, who is a, a Republican from Iowa, uh, made an amendment to, and I believe uh, the rest of the Republicans went along with it, uh, to stamp out the $15 minimum wage, at least from this bill. Anyways. I mean, obviously, uh, we have until 2022 to find out uh, if there's another, um, uh, another Republican led Senate. Um, but in any case, uh, so the Republicans decided to go against uh, the $15 minimum wage, which is interesting because I, from what I hear, I have not seen any video of it, but from what I hear, uh, she stated that because it's a because of the pandemic, uh, this would put uh, small businesses in jeopardy of closing. Problem is, within the guidelines of the uh, of the relief package. The one, the Senate has already passed the $15 minimum wage that wouldn't go on in effect until 2023 anyway. Uh, two, uh, in this package, uh, I guess just kind of uh, to, um, I guess what, refine or to uh, to make sure that, that is, is law. Um, the $15 minimum wage in this law wouldn't go in effect for at least five years. So, to for for Republicans who, who decide not to pay people enough money to live on, especially in her own state, in her own state the uh, the state minimum wage is exactly the same as the federal minimum, minimum wage, which is seven twenty five an hour. Uh, I looked up and see how much a the cheapest one bedroom say you say you have a family or or at least married and you want to live one bedroom is nine twenty five a month. Um, now, with that said, uh, and, that's, and I was watching the house uh, a, a bit, of, a little bit ago. Somebody was actually stating the same, um, the same figures I was uh, in regards to, in regards to uh, the fifty dollar minimum wage. Uh, it's now for anybody that's making seven twenty five, it's two ninety uh, every two weeks, and it's like what twelve, thirteen hundred every month, where. Where your rent is nine twenty five a month. So, if people wanted to go, if if things were done right and done in such a way that it would keep uh, people in houses and all that stuff, we would literally have between twenty to thirty dollars an hour um, minimum wage because of cost of living. But the federal government does not go with cost of living. They go with, um, I guess the S or the SIC or some to affect you know like what where gas prices are and stuff of that nature when in reality it should be uh, dependent on the how much you had to pay for food rent gasoline of course uh, hopefully you pretty soon uh, electricity with regards to uh, charging up your uh, your car um, and other things of that nature uh, if they wanted to go by that that would make substantial changes to people's lives. In regards to how they live, save, you know, whatever the case may be, how they, you know, their kids are able to go to college, uh, if if there isn't um, free uh, tuition or free schooling in regards to uh, 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 higher education, my thought process on this, and again, this, this is my opinion, I think that because the rest of the countries in the world have free or low, very low cost education. Um, then we should be able to provide that. Now, the majority of the reason why we don't is because the government actually gets a substantial amount of money uh, from students who have to pay back that plus 
uh, the principal happened, you know, kind of like the fee portion of things, like say, you know, like 9,500 on schools, you had to pay like say 20% uh, extra on that. Uh, that would be the principal. That goes to the federal government, the rest goes to the banks that lent it to the federal government. Uh, now, since uh, that uh, is done through that way, and that's with higher taxes on those who can afford it. Now, if if a person uh, got like say 30 bucks an hour, just for instance, you know, for example, uh, they would be able to not only go to school on that, especially with tuition uh, growing every year. I'm not even sure how how much in comparison, but you have to take a we have to take a pay loan out or a pay loan, I'm sorry, a federal uh, student loan out. And you had to take out a job that even with your parents helping you, if they're financially able to, uh, that creates that, that that is a lot of money you have to put towards education for a degree that may be obsolete by the time you leave the college. So that's the reason why it should be free, because if you are able to get a degree that is that you could use in a substantial way in the workforce that goes back into the economy anyway which would be able to allow taxation on you know justifiable taxation on your income now with regards to big business my thought process on that is if they hired as many people as they said they would if they got tax incentives uh then there would be no there would be no unemployment because in the last 30 40 years the government has been given uh, big businesses lots and lots of different types of uh, tax credits tax write-offs stuff of that nature that can either be based off the loss of income through um let's see property ownership uh or any other kind of business ownership that sort of thing and if they took that away and put that along with, you know, uh, people being able to go to school, then things would be fine. That's just, of course, my opinion. Um, same thing with Medicare for all. It's the same thing. You, things would cost less if big business was not involved. The profit margin, the, the profit motive would be out. Anyway, that's what I wanted to say for regards to that. I think the whole thing with joint earnings and the pitch dumping away just total BS. I think that the, now the Republicans wanted to play the progressives. I think I'm, Chuck Grassley, of all people, last night I saw on, on the Senate floor claiming that uh, because you make uh, 75 to $150,000 a year, you're declared like you, you, uh, you get too much money. Depending on what they spend that freaking money on, it's not enough money. Uh, but I could be wrong about that because I don't make that much a year. I'm on Social Security. I make maybe thirteen, fourteen thousand a year. So I would be below, below, below uh, uh, um, poverty. Uh, anyway, I think for the Republicans to now claim to be progressive is the, the biggest laugh of the century so far. And we're just starting. So anyway, um, I hope you subscribe to this channel. I hope you enjoyed this My Opinion segment I put on my channel now. Um, and subscribe to my channel, uh, press that bell, um, comment, share, you name it, do it. Thank you, and I hope you guys have a good night. I will talk to you in a couple hours, actually. Peace out for now.